This is the Bears Barroom Radio Network. The following program is recorded live and intended for all audiences. Radio is scripted now. We just come up with it. We don't use computers. We don't rehearse. We're going to talk about this next. We're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about the Bulls. And then we're going to have Brad Fixon. And then we're going to have uh, all this. No. No. If you don't know what you're going to talk about in the top of your head before a show, you shouldn't be in the business. I don't know what you got. I feel like Vince Vaughn in, in a couple's retreat. The sharks are circling. Old school, baby. You're listening to the Mike North Advantage, and it begins right now. That's right. The Mike North Advantage starts right now. I am Aldo Gundy. I'm Mike's wingman, and it's the Monday version of the Mike North Advantage, and that means another very special interview. Mike's guest tonight is Texas Tech guard Matt Mooney. We'll get the load on on how Mike is doing. You know, he's doing well. He's red hot. The hottest handicapper in the universe. Plus, how about the announcement that the Chicago Bears and Green Bay Packers will kick off the NFL season on September 5th at Soldier Field on a Thursday? We've got a lot to talk about. Mike North, how are you, my friend? I'm great, Eldo. Good to talk to you again on the Mike North Advantage. And I'll tell you what, we got a great guest tonight. Eldo will be back in a few with chat board questions plus another shot question or two for our next guest who, believe me when I tell you this, you know, uh, when I coached for six years, it was an assistant coach at Notre Dame High School. I had, a, I had a lot of, there were a lot of kids that came through for head coach Tom Les and Kevin Clancy and, and Jeff Williams and all the guys there, and it's still great, great school. And I had a guy named Jimmy Martin who was one of my favorite players. He was in the first year that I coached. But then I said, okay, there's not going to be another one to come down the line like Jimmy. And then all of a sudden there's a scrawny kid that comes in the gym. He was about, uh, I think about six one at the time. I don't know, sort of tall for his age, but not as, as, as big as he is now. I mean, he's matured into a full-grown man. I enjoyed coaching him, enjoyed being around him. And uh, now he's playing for Texas Tech, and what a kick it is for me to watch and for everybody else at Notre Dame College Prep in uh, Niles, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. And anybody that knows this guy who's a class act, to watch him on television like I did yesterday and throughout the season with all the games on TV now. It's my buddy and uh, great player for Texas Tech, point point guard, Matt Mooney. What's up, Matt? I'm doing great, Coach. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, it's great to have you on. And uh, I'll tell you, Sweet 16, you got Michigan coming on. I mean, it's got to be, you got to be the king of the, the king of the walk at Texas Tech, you guys, right now, right? We're living like kings out here, man. But, um, you know, like we said uh, before, we're not satisfied. We're trying to keep this thing going. We're trying to win the whole thing. You know, I got to talk to you about the road you took. You went to Air Force because nobody, and I mean nobody, we'll get to it, recruited you. Nobody. We, we, mm-hmm. we went to people. We talked to people. Tom Les, the head coach, the great head coach, then talked to people, and, you know, you didn't get any bites. You go to Air Force for a year. I think that's where you really grew. And then you go to South Dakota State, and, you, you know, you start you play well there. You had one of their best players of all time. And then you end up on your final year at Texas Tech. Am I hitting this all right? And uh, how crazy was that for you? How different was that for you to be in three different places? Yeah, it's not how I wanted it to go. You know, I wanted to go somewhere four years and graduate from that school and have a great career there, but it just didn't end up that way. And, you know, I went from Air Force to South Dakota, and now here I am at Texas Tech. It's been a heck of a journey. Let me ask you, I mean, it was between three schools for you to go from South Dakota State to where you're at now. But the other two schools were Northwestern and Creighton. Um, I know that people reached out from Northwestern, and you ended up going to Texas Tech. I'm sure they were all tough decisions for you, but I noticed you read or you looked into all the programs, and the one strength that Chris Beard had was that he had taken on first-year guys before from different schools and mm-hmm. handled them well. Am I right in uh, assuming that? Yeah. No, that was good for me. I uh, I looked at all the coaches, and if they've dealt with guys like me before, or new teams, new players, grad transfers, and Coach Beard had, and he had also uh, coached at a mid-major at Arkansas Little Rock. 
and he had 10 new players, and he led that team to the tournament. So he had some experience dealing with new guys and grad transfers. Now, Bill Carmody was the coach at, at Northwestern at the time. We tried to get them to look at you. He never came into mm-hmm. gym. Nobody, I don't think, came to see you. Um, but not a lot of people did, but he was right down the street. But now, four years okay. later, three, four years later, here comes Northwestern again. Different regime. Chris Collins, not a bad guy. Jim Phillips, a friend of mine. They came after you strong. Uh, you don't regret the decision, I'm sure, but was it close? Yeah, it was really close. I loved Coach Collins, Coach Donlin. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I still I still really like those guys a lot. I, I thought Coach Collins was a great coach and a great person. You know, a lot of times in the coaching business, you don't deal with genuine genuine people. Um, it's, a, it's a business, you know, and they're just trying to win. But those coaches were good people, too, uh, good character. So it was really hard not to, to go there, um, especially not to come back home and and uh go to northwest um but i just i went with my heart i went with my gut and i chose texas tech and it has been it's worked out for me so far oh yeah you got to be absolutely thrilled i know your family is your family out there with you they're going to the games are they watching here back at home uh they're mostly watching at home you know because it's a little ways away it's nice that now that um playing most our games are all on ESPN, uh so they can watch them all on national tv um, mm-hmm. but they're coming, uh, they're coming down to the games this, uh, this weekend for the Sweet 16. Now, I noticed now you've taken a look at Michigan. You're not, you've, you've seen all the teams and everything else. I, I'm surprised. Michigan usually plays grinded out games, but I think they have a very underrated offense. While they mix in very good defense, uh, are we seeing the same team? I mean, what do you know about Michigan, uh, about these guys that you're going to be facing? Yeah, we're seeing the same team. You know, actually... In terms of the analytics, coach, um, you know the analytics have us as the number one defense in the nation, and number mm-hmm. two is Michigan. So mm-hmm. two really good defensive teams going at it. But they uh, they've got five you know potential NBA players on their roster. They have guys that are on the NBA radar, um, and they got a lot of uh, different skill sets. Guys that can shoot, good athletes, big guys, good passing point guard. Um, so they're really good offensively, too. It's going to be a battle. Yeah, I'm looking at a 66-62, 66-63 game. You guys win, of course, because you're on the team, but you solidified that. You. you know what? i got to tell you, I watch you at the point. I've always liked you at the two. I didn't say you can't play the point, but it seems to me I like you attacking from the wing because when you're from the point, you got to go through maybe three or four guys. When you're from the wing, it just seems like even though you're not in the middle of the floor, you got a little bit more freedom to, to dribble the ball. And, 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 am I wrong in that? I mean, do you, where would you rather start from? Because I've seen you do both. Yeah, I mean, at, at South Dakota, and uh, I was at South Dakota, not South Dakota State. That was a, a Oh, I'm lot sorry. Of, my apologies it's, to the good. South Dakota people, my friend. To the, yeah. It's a big deal out there in South Dakota. I don't know how many. I uh, bet it is. I don't South want Dakota. nobody coming down with a bow and arrow. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> They're gonna come after you. <laughs> <laughs> so would you rather come from the wing, or would you rather come from the? I like you from the wing. I always did. Well, yeah, like I, I was saying at South Dakota, you know, I was off the ball, and I would just that was my mindset was just score, score, score. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, honestly. I don't know what I'm what I'm better at. You know, maybe I'm better off the ball, but you got to be able to play both. And at this yeah. level, yeah, you, yeah, I you got to be able to be play one both. You know, yeah. Oh yeah, no, you're handling the rock for them too. That's what's impressive. You play both roles for them, which I'm sure that makes it easier on Coach Beard, no doubt about it. Tom Russ, great head coach. I don't think you'd uh, dispute that. Uh, who retired and, oh. and put his heart and soul into Notre Dame. I watched you play defense the other day. I saw you get five steals. I, it's my contention. I know you've had coaches, but you get it from the beginning. How much, because he was a defensive coach, believe me, he would have wished the score was 12 to 10, you know, back in the day. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I saw the way you played defense. How much did he bring to the table for you? He probably wishes I could play defense like this uh, for him back when he coached me. Cause, <laughs> you, you know, he was always fighting me to play defense. You're in the weight room. Now, I bet, because you look bigger. It says 200 pounds in the program, 
But to me, I think you will go about 210. It looks that way. Yeah. But you're chiseled. I mean, you, you, we used to beg you to try to get into the weight room. It seems now like you're addicted to it, right? No, I wanted to be in the weight room. I was just, I was immature. I was a late bloomer, man. I was skinny. I was, mm-hmm. you know, that's just how I was built. But mm-hmm. you're right. And I you am were actually, quiet, too. You were quiet, and you were shy, sort of, at the beginning, right? Yeah, I was. That's kind of how, that's my personality, a little bit, until I get to know you. Right. Yeah, well, you know, we got to know each other. Remember the backpack episode? Yeah. <laughs> when you just kept telling yeah. everybody you had a bad back, and then one day yeah. you go, Coach, I forgot my backpack. I go to pick the thing up. I almost broke my arm <laughs> trying, to, trying to lift it, and you were wearing it on your back. And then I said, Matt, do you think this, I told your dad who was there, I said, do you think this could be the problem? And then you said, you know, maybe it is. And then you stopped wearing it, and your back did get a little better. But I, you know what? I noticed yeah. that every, you play every game. You haven't missed much, have you, in your college career? No, you were on to something with the backpack. But, no, I uh, I think I missed uh, one game at Air Force and one game at uh, South Dakota in my two years there. Um, so I think I missed two games. You know what? I, you told me you're going to be going to yoga in about five or ten minutes. Is that with the team, or is that with uh, like in a class? Is that uh, uh, when going, we were younger, we never said that stuff. We're going to yoga. <laughs> you know, we're going to go shoot some hoops, but it's it's the flexibility. I understand. Hey, it's a new thing. It's hey, I'm a, where I'm would you be without I'm a, yoga? I'm a grad transfer. Uh, well, I probably wouldn't be playing as good as defense, getting as many steals. You know, this yoga, it's a uh, hot yoga. I go with my strength coach, just me and him. He takes me to this place uh, out here in Lubbock, and mm-hmm. I go once a week. And it's uh, it's a bit it's a different than a, a lifting workout. It's more of a, you know, flexibility, stretching, holding some lunges and stuff like that, doing some core, and it's good for me. It's good, you know. It t- sounds fruity, you know, yoga, but it's good. it's good for me, man. But let me ask you, what's the most boring place of the three places you've been to? <laughs> or did you enjoy them? Boring. Went, you went Colorado. You were in where Col- Colorado, like it with the Air Force. You were with, and that had to be really tough. I mean, the first year had to be crazy. And then you were, yeah. you're in Lubbock, okay? I think of, uh, yeah. you know, Westerns. And then uh, you were at South Dakota. Uh, yeah. Which, which place you might, did you like? I loved South Dakota. Uh, it was, that for most people probably think that would be the most boring, but I had, I had a lot of fun there. Um, just, it was a small town. I didn't think, you know, I thought it would be boring, but it kept me focused. And, you know, I love my teammates and the community there. Air Force, it was prison there, you know. Couldn't, couldn't leave the base. <laughs> well, did you, I was did you really want to go to Air Force? I mean, that was who was offering you the scholarship, and it was good that you had the grades that were good enough to go to Air Force. But when I looked yeah. at you and look, you looked at me and you knew you were going to Air Force, I didn't think it was – going to happen completely of course i was happy with your decision i was happy you're getting a free ride but i mean did after after the first year or during the middle did you say okay maybe i need to do something else because you were looking forward to to further your basketball career too right yeah so i mean you know you're right about that was my only division one offer and how you know growing up you know these days you want to play division one that's what you dream of and uh you know, I knew I wanted to play Division One, and I obviously dreamed of playing in the NBA. So first, you got to play Division One. Um, so I took it. I went there. I liked the coaching staff, and I was like, all right, you know, I can do this military stuff to play ball. And you know, I just wasn't happy. It wasn't for me. Um, I like to be in the gym, and I like to get better. I just couldn't. I couldn't do that there. So then, right. then I, you know, and then I decided to to leave and go somewhere else. Well, you know what? You made the right decision. Before we let you go, we got Aldo here with a question, then a uh, question or two from the chat board. Aldo? Yeah, a couple questions. Um, you guys uh, have had a fairly easy, I don't want to say easy, that's probably not fair to say, but you guys, the first two games were fairly easy. This is obviously going to be the biggest competition of the tournament so far for you. What do you guys do to prepare for an, op- an opponent that you know is going to be the toughest challenge of the tournament? so far yeah I, we'll approach the game just like we approached the last two this is the most important game for us this year you know it's the next game on the schedule 
you know, we started watching film today and started getting the game plan in, um, you know, going over personnel, going over what they're going to do offensively and, and defensively. And, uh, you know, the coaches just try to remind us, like, this team is really good. They're the real deal. You know, they're second in uh, defensive efficiency right behind us. They went to the national championship last year. So they're just telling us, like, this team is going to be a different uh, a different type of battle than the last two. And you're going to need uh, top performances from everyone uh, who steps onto that court. But talk to me a little bit about Jarrett Culver, the uh, the sophomore who uh, I think he's averaging 18 points and six rebounds per game, uh, if I remember correctly. A lot of people are really high on Jarrett. Uh, talk to me about what he is like as a teammate and what are your expectations of him in this upcoming game? Yeah, I mean, we're expecting him to, to have a big game. Like, you know, he shows up every time we have a big game, so we're probably, we're expecting that. Um, but Jarrett, he's an incredible player, but he's a great person. He's humble. Uh, he works his talent off, you know. Um, he's he's just a great teammate. Like, people think he'd probably be cocky and arrogant. He's going to be a lottery pick, but he's just a regular dude. He's, he's pretty shy, pretty quiet, uh, really laid back, and he, he works, so... Uh, we're about to get some shots up here in a few minutes. Last question for you. Uh, from me, uh, I'm hoping to play Mike North one-on-one uh, in a basketball <laughs> game. Can you help me with my outside shooting? Can you give me one tip in order for, in order for me to increase my shooting percentage from about 10% to at least 50? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to ask me. My shooting percentage isn't, isn't great right now, but I would say – you know, get some air under the ball. You know, don't shoot it That's flat. Get, get some arc on it. Matt, listen, baby, we're going to let you go. Appreciate you jumping on uh, the Mike North Advantage. Always, We're all proud of you here in Chicago. I'm sure everybody's going to hear this on the podcast, and some many are hearing it live right now. Uh, so it's on all the platforms, but check the Twitter feed tonight later on, and uh, we appreciate okay. you joining us, buddy. And say hi to the family, okay? All right, I will. It was great talking to you. Good luck, Matt. All right. Take Thanks. care, buddy. Matt Moody. Uh, from uh, Texas Tech, uh, a real live guy that's actually playing right now. How about, How about that? that, Aldo? That's the first for this show, right? It is, totally. Yeah, totally. I usually bring on the relics besides us, <laughs> like uh, Hawk Harrelson, you know, bring Jimbo Covert out of, uh, you know, his therapy session, you know, guys like that, George, but they're all great guys. But this guy is actually playing this Thursday. That's got to be a wild scene. I cannot tell you. I don't have kids, never had kids. Mm-hmm. But, I was a kid. I could tell you when I played, my dad would come to some of the games, and I could tell he was proud. Just by coaching this kid and watching him play in a Sweet 16 now Ugh. and watching him the last two weeks, and they're, they're wiping people out. Yeah. He's playing well, but his shooting percentage is, he has not been well. Mm-hmm. shooting about 42%, he, but he's doing a lot of different things for them. It's a thrill. Mm-hmm. It's a thrill. Yeah. You, helped, you helped him along with great people like head coach Tom Les, Kevin Clancy, Jeff, I mean, these people, Jeff Williams, a lot of other guys that, that helped and connected. Uh, I forget a lot now who, who the whole crew. There was like freshman coaches, Joe, Adam. They all would know I remember them all. I love them. But I'm sure everybody is very proud of just watching this kid yeah. who came from like this. He's playing for this high school in Niles, Illinois. The next thing you know. He's got a shot to go to the big dance. Isn't that something? Wow. <laughs> now, yeah, he did he did say that his shooting percentage is off and yeah, he's had uh he's had a little trouble recently getting the shot going. He was 4 for 15 against Buffalo, 3 for 8 against Northern Kentucky, uh 3 for 10 at that uh, West Virginia game. So yeah, he, he mm-hmm. needs to he needs to find his shooting touch and and that's going to be critical for this team to beat Michigan because Michigan's defense is so good. I mean, they're second in the country only to texas tech so that's going to be a great great challenge for this young man and we wish him a lot of luck yeah i didn't want to say anything to him but the over under in that game is 126 there's another game that's 118 but the rest are 140 145 so you know it's going to be a defensive bad also we apologize if there was any problems with the phone i know that once in a while we were talking over each other because uh he was coming out of fade with me, or I couldn't hear him, he couldn't hear me. So we do apologize for that, but I think the interview came across 
pretty clean, and it didn't matter. We just got the kid on. It's appreciating him coming on on a Monday mm-hmm. when he's got one of the he's got the biggest game of his life coming up on Thursday. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Really nice guy. Uh, here's Coach. I thought I got rid of this guy. Now he wants me to come on some podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, Mike, uh, tell us how you did over the weekend with your uh, handicap. Oh my God, Eldo! <laughs> when you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. I mean, Walt, Walt Disney. Walt Disney would be impressed, and I'm more impressed with Walt Disney back in the day. No, I mean, you want to talk about stars and strikes forever? On a roll, getting it done. Two and zero on Bears Bar Room. Ten and four. Six and one. Uh, where I was two and one last week on the odds couple, and then I go two and zero on Vegas scores and odds yesterday. So I mean, I'm just push- I'm pushing the right buttons. Got a lot of confidence. Picking games that I think uh, are important. Uh, I, I, I think the one thing I've tried to stress to people is there's been games I decided not to take lately that I would have lost. Mm-hmm. And I've always said this. I said, you know what? Sometimes, and I've said it on, on our show forever, we've been together as, as pals and brethren for, what, 31, 32 weeks? No. On well, the show? 41, right? Mike, 41 weeks. 41, it seems... Seems like only yesterday. <laughs> That's right. I should say it's 41 shows. This is this is the 41st show that we've done together. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we did, yeah. We started doing two a week right. about four weeks ago. But, yeah. Exactly. So I've stressed that sometimes the best bet mm-hmm. is the bet you don't make. Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't take this game because you have nothing to do when it's on TV and you're sitting around the house and you're bored. If you do... <laughs> Bet a tenth of what you would normally do. Just do it for entertainment purposes only. But, but don't go trying that. It's all about the business of it. So, you know, there was a. It, it's just everything's falling into place right now. And a couple of those games I could have won, like I talked about Wolford, very close game. I should have won that one. Montana was a very close game. Uh, so, you know, I got no complaints right now. I really don't. I'm happy as a lark. Yeah, and the tournament overall, how do you how do you view the quality of play of the tournament and, and how excited are you for the next uh, couple of weeks with, with the tournament now down to 16 uh, teams? I got to tell you, although I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled about the tournament because I'm up. You know what I mean? <laughs> if, you, if I was 2-14, and 14, you'd ask me about the tournament. I might, I might be, you know, the oven, the oven might be turned on right now. You know, with all the windows shut. <laughs> Uh, I mean, seriously, I'm mean, having some of, some of the great. I'm mean, having one of the greatest tournaments of my whole life. Yeah. So I think the quality of play has been sensational. <laughs> for God's sake, I really do it. I couldn't. Go, they're hitting key baskets for me, and I, and 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 you know what? You know what the, the thing about handicapping is, uh-huh. like the Indiana game. The beauty of that Indiana game is I was only getting four points mm-hmm. on bar room. I took Indiana plus four. They won by like thirty. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't even a game. Yeah. <laughs> so I love when I pick them that right. But also, what's nice is when you win by a point. When you and if you lose, you can't cry. Mm. You just can't. Yeah. Because I've been very at the last thing. Oh, Mike's crying. He's won ten out of his last twelve. He lost two tough games. You just keep moving on. <laughs> Every day is a different day. Mm. Now, have you rethought? You, I know you picked Iowa State to win it all. So, have you rethought who uh, could possibly is going to win this thing? Do you have a favorite? Look at Aldo. I tried to educate America yesterday. <laughs> it was on deaf ears. You know I love you like a brother. Yes, and I love I, you. I really do. I love you like a brother. I tried to tell you. <laughs> but that kid would play good against Williams, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. The, against Zion. He played good, he and did? he did. Oh, my gosh, 32 Except points? <laughs> there's, he, yeah. yeah. I mean, our guy just kicked ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just a great, great game. Uh, they deserve to lose Duke. But Zion came through. The other guy came through. Mm-hmm. You've got to be able to close. But I think Duke's a team of destiny. I think that was their tough game. Yeah, Every team has a tough game. You just brought it up. Texas Tech hasn't had a tough game yet. Is this going to be the tough game for Texas Tech? Mm-hmm. Michigan hasn't had a tough game yet either. So something's coming to a head mm-hmm. uh, on Thursday. Yeah. Something's coming to a head between those two teams. Well, that's a fun basketball. I like Duke. 
You, I know. I, I mean, it's hard to pick against them right now because I just I, I, I see the way that they're playing, and I don't think that there's another team that, that's comparable well, to North them. Well, North Carolina is really good. Mm-hmm. North Carolina's been playing well, yeah. but I just think – and I, look, I'm not going to say that they can't win it. North Carolina is really, really good, mm-hmm. uh, and they've done well against Duke. Uh, but Williams wasn't in one of the games, I don't think. In fact, that was the game he got hurt in, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. They have 36 seconds. So, but they've had their way with Duke. I just think that was the tough game for them. I think they'll be loose for the next game. We'll see what happens. Like I said, I'd rather pick the individual games than the actual brackets. Very good. All right, before we talk baseball, I want to get your thoughts on the announcement that the Chicago Bears and Green Bay Packers are going to start the 2019 season at Soldier Field. Packers at Chicago. It's the 100th anniversary of the NFL, and this is just a perfect way to start the season, would you not say? Yeah, somebody said, who do you like? I go, don't start it. Just start it. <laughs> the Bears are four-point favorites, I think, in that game. Is that, her, um, is that true already? Oh. Yeah, they I got the it. line out already. Nice. Um yeah, I just think that it's perfect. I love the rivalry. Mm-hmm. As a kid growing up, uh, watching the Packers and the Bears, those gold and green uniforms against the white uniforms, that did the orange. It was just beautiful. Mm-hmm. On a fall day, yeah. going to Wrigley Field to watch and play, it was beautiful. And uh, I think it's the greatest rivalry going. It's the 100th anniversary of the NFL. And without these two teams, without Curly Lambeau, without George Alice, where is everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. What happens to everybody? So um, I don't even know if there's a league. So George Preston Marshall with the Washington Redskins, I can go all night long with the great owners from the beginning. Mm. I think they're all forgotten, for God's sake. Now everybody thinks this league was invented in 1990. I think everybody needs a quick history lesson about... Uh, the guy, you know, George Hallis sold the tickets, went out and got the advertising. Mm-hmm. He only had, like, two assistant coaches. He had one trainer. I mean, he rented Wrigley Field. Mm-hmm. I mean, he couldn't play a home game in September sometimes. And if he did, then he had to take the bleachers up and then take them back down. <laughs> so, I mean, those were some rough days at times. Then he, he went out and got Red Grange. He was an innovator. But, I mean, guys like Paul Brown were innovators, too. Just great, great people. It's a great, great sport. It yeah, really is. It really is. And, and and we complain a lot about the NFL. And... I felt like a professor at Harvard yeah, just now. Yeah, Professor North. I've called you that before. You, you've earned that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a PhD in it's sportsology. It's been a great sport. It really has. It really has. And we complain a lot about the present-day NFL with Roger Goodell and so forth. But bottom line is we, we're all uh, attracted to this game because there's a beauty and a sense of violence to it that you just – can't find anywhere else uh you know it, boxing had its day uh but uh, football is is always going to be tops in my mind when it comes to mixing those two things that aggressive violent nature of mankind plus with the the beauty of the athleticism of wide receivers going up to catch the ball and running backs making jukes jukes and so forth and the spiral of the football it, it's just something you can't match anywhere else in sports no and it's a good TV game. Mm-hmm. It's easy to follow. Yep. They have all the lasers now. You even know where the first downs are. Mm. You know, it's got its imperfections. But really, I mean, my love for the game goes back to 1960, 61, 62. I mean, I, I, I really woke up to, to, you know, know what was going on uh, to the Packers dynasty, to Bart Starr, to all those guys. And then Horning uh, got suspended along with Alex Kears in 63. And that's uh, they didn't play that season. That killed Green Bay. That's how the Bears got in. Right. People don't know that. Yeah. If Horning don't miss that season, Paul Horning, he's a guy that put up 172 points. He <laughs> scored touchdowns. He kicked field goals and extra points. Amazing. Amazing. I athlete. mean, amazing football player. And they lost him for the whole 63 season. Wow. And nobody's going to tell me, and I know the Bear fans will get mad. But if he plays for the Packers in 63, I don't know if the Bears win in 63. Mm. He was out in the Bears. The Bears, I think, split with them, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. That's correct. But yes. the Bears were the better team that year. And, hey, too bad. He got caught gambling. 
That's the way it goes. The difference between football and baseball is Karras and Horny got caught gambling, and they said, don't ever do that again. We'll see you next year. <laughs> well, if you get caught gambling in baseball, you're done forever. Yeah. Pete Rose. Right? Pete Rose is a testament Alex, to that. Karras, yeah, Alex Karras and Paul Horny played the very next year. That's correct, yeah. Now, let, right. me, let me ask you this. Was the rivalry between Packer fans and Bears fans anything like it is now? Like, I, I was just getting into stuff with Packer fans on Twitter. You know, we're going back and forth on stuff. But w- how intense was the rivalry between Packer fans and Chicago Bears fans back in the 60s and 70s when you were, you know, getting acclimated to NFL football? It was brutal. If you walked into Wrigley Field with a Packer jersey, you had a problem. <laughs> you wanted to get beat up, and the same thing goes the other way around. <laughs> you a- walk in with a Bear jersey, same thing. <laughs> now everybody, everybody's got you know. It should have the right to wear whatever you want. Mm-hmm. It have no problems with you don't. But back then it was different. Mm-hmm. There were different crowds. Elgo, the '63 crowd were blue collar crowds. Mm-hmm. They were guys that were had season tickets handed down to them still from their fathers or grandfathers. They were, I mean, from everywhere, from lawyers to plumbers to janitors uh, to doormen. I mean, my, my, my uncles worked for the Park District. They had season tickets. Mm. So um, it, it, the crowds are different now. They're more, how do you say this, reserved. Yeah, it's, co- it's a uh, more- Even though, and you don't drink like you used to. Right. I mean, we used to like to go walk. To, if we didn't walk into the game already fully lit, we mm. were failures as human beings. <laughs> That's how we felt. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> we didn't try hard enough. You know? But now everything's police. You got to watch this. You got to mm-hmm. watch that. You can't do this. Can't do that. I mean, you can't cause a problem anymore without a camera around. It's a shame. <laughs> yeah, it's t- <laughs> the civilization has gone downhill since then. <laughs> I'll tell you, you what. You know how many? You know, uh, there's cameras everywhere. Now. Oh my goodness! Yes. You know. Yeah. But there's no doubt that with the advent of all the cameras mm-hmm. all over the country and all over the world, mm-hmm. like the like like even the incident we had with Smollett not too long ago, mm-hmm. there's been hundreds of murders that have been avoided, probably. Oh, that's you a know? good point. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt a guy goes, I'd like to get, I'm going to go kill that guy over there. Oh, wait, there's some cameras around somewhere. There's no doubt. <laughs> Forget right. it. I'm going to go home and sleep it off. You know what I mean? <laughs> there there better be a lot of cameras at Soldier Field on September 5th. Where are the old days when the cops were nowhere to be found? <laughs> That is great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's turn our attention to baseball. You and I were supposed yeah. to talk about baseball yesterday, but we ran out of time. I want to talk about the Cubs and the Sox, get some predictions. But first, there's an article in theathletic.com that uh, you turn on a sports radio station today, and everybody was talking about, about it. Uh, uh, who was it that wrote this thing? Um, bear with me just a second as I scroll up on my computer. It was Patrick. Take your time, my friend. Patrick Mooney. Hey, this is a Mooney show. Patrick Mooney and Shadeva Sharma both wrote an article about the Cubs getting back to details in order to ensure a more successful season in 2019. Uh, Epstein and and Jed Hoyer, they went and visited all the key players in their homes, and they talked about what needed to improve and so forth. And here are just some of the things that they're going to focus on this year. They're going to hold mandatory batting practice four or five times a week and encourage the young players to document their routines, writing down what they do before day, day games and night games. Let me go through this list and get you to comment after each one. What do you think about this right. idea of mandatory batting practice four or five times a week? I think it should be every time they have a game. I agree. <laughs> What's going on? I don't, what is this? Buddy? What, what the hell is going on? They were taking batting practice some of the games. <laughs> I know. When we were kids, you were you were given the show two hours before the game. We get to the games two hours early. Watch batting <laughs> practice. Now they call it off, so it should be every game. That's my deal. I don't have no pity on these guys. Make them hit. Make them uh, work for the money they make. 
Batting practice was always like the second most favorite thing to do in baseball outside of actually playing the game. I mean, you want to go to batting practice. You want to hit the ball. So the exactly. idea that, that players were missing batting practice, that just is kind of weird to me. I don't know what's going on. It is weird mm-hmm. to me, and it's sort of weird to me, and I know we're going to go on with this because I like it, mm-hmm. number one. But, <clears throat> excuse me, number two, we're show men. Mm-hmm. These two guys, I mean, the general managers are visiting the homes. and the, Hey, well, hey, good to see you. It's January. <laughs> Theo and I were in the neighborhood. We thought we'd stop by. Uh, listen, here's what we want to do. Where's Joe? <laughs> I think he may have gone to some of these. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, I want to make sure. But they don't say he's there. Yeah, I, I've skimmed through the article. So to be fair, maybe Joe was at all of these. I'm not, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, you think he might have gone to these just like we thought they took batting practice before every game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can't believe that. <laughs> all right, here's another one. Releasing the lineups on a series-by-series series basis. So let's say if they're playing the Cardinals in the upcoming series, uh, Joe Madden is going to post the lineups for uh, all three games so that way players don't feel like they have to press because if they go 0 for 4 in the first game of the series, that Joe is going to take them out of the lineup. What do you think about that? Uh, here's the problem I've always had with Joe Mann. Mm-hmm. The reason he's got to do this is because we came from an era. I did Pat Piper the other day. Mm-hmm. The reason I knew the lineup, because it was the same lineup every day. Joe Madden sometimes will have three or four different players in from one day to the next. And it's hard for players to realize, am I going to play tomorrow? He wasn't telling players that. And I'd want to know when I'm going to play. So I'm going to go, I like that. I like the fact that for a three-game series, so-and-so knows he ain't playing the first two games, but he better be ready for game three. Okay. That, uh, that may, from that perspective, it makes sense. I just feel like uh, when I first read this, I felt like I mean, they're coddling the players. Oh, you know, you're going to go 0 for 4, and, and and we don't want you to feel bad. We were planning on not playing you in the middle game. I'm of the with series. you on that. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I mean, but that, but that's not how bad it does it. Yeah. A guy, I've seen guys go three for three that I say they ain't playing. It drives me crazy. <laughs> that is, that, my brother tells me the same thing. I can't believe this lineup. Right. <laughs> he calls me out of the blue to complain about the lineup. All right, here's the third one on this list. Circling 10 or so trap games and challenging the Cubs to win them all. So, for instance, like there may be a getaway day game in Cincinnati, like a, uh, like, uh, like, a, like a Sunday night game. And the next day they're going to travel, or that night they're going to tra- travel. A lot of times these games, you're not getting 100% effort from the players because their minds are on get, catching the plane and getting away. So they want to circle those games as trap games and challenging the team to win them all. Your thoughts on that? I would say circle them all. I know. I want you. Hey. I, I'd circle them all. I, that's not a mentality that I'm gonna, In other words, you're automatically thinking. Mm-hmm. That they're not going to give a hundred percent. Yes. See, I'd be as a player that always gave a hundred percent. I would take that as an offense to me. Exactly. Uh, you don't have to circle games. I'm a, I'm a grown ass man, mm-hmm. so I think that's wrong. I totally agree with you, uh, Mike. If I was a manager for a baseball team, I would start off my opening speech by saying, "We're going to go one hundred and sixty-two and zero, right. because we're going to go play go play to win every game." I, I don't well, get Well, man's this. coaching for his life. So, you know, he's managing for his life. And what I say is, I know that if, if man doesn't get it done this year, he's probably gone. That will probably be a mistake. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I never thought Quinville would be gone, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, him be man being gone after, you know, being in the playoffs every year and, yeah. and, and, and going and winning the World Series, if you're going to do better than them, it's going to be tough. But you never know. Okay. And now I got two more. They're asking all. I love this. Yeah, this is pretty cool, and it's a great article. It's in theathletic.com, and uh, so uh, it's a pay-per-view service. So you'll probably have to, you know, either pay for it or do something to see it free. But nonetheless, here are the last two points. Uh, That's all right. I'll save it. I'll save it. I'll yeah. save my three fifty. I can read it to you. Yeah, you can For read free. it to me. Maybe tonight I'll call you later. <laughs> okay. Uh, spend, they're asking the players to spend more time in the dugout during games and being ready when the national anthem is sung. 
<laughs> I'm going to tell you something right now. I don't like the way that the clubhouses now are attached. Yeah. Yeah, uh, oh, that's a good to point. To the dugout. Yeah. I like, I, I hate it. Mm-hmm. when the, Are your teams at bat, mm-hmm. especially in April? Mm-hmm. In early May when it's like 35 degrees Mm -hmm. and there's a day game in Cleveland or Toronto or Chicago Mm -hmm. and they go, I'll tell you what, the two people they got in that dugout are really upset right now. You know, they'll (laughs) they'll, they'll show the manager there's no players. I know. There's 24 guys on the roster. So I'm I'm with the Cubs on that. (laughs) Absolutely. But but what, what is funny is this is supposed to be something a manager would lay down. Exactly. I don't get this. I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why this is even something for discussion. This should have been happening all along. All right. It should have been. Here's Most the of la- the stuff should have been happening all along, no doubt. Yeah. Now, here's the last one. This is. A, I'm really, really interested in getting your opinion on this one. They want to limit the amount of alcohol and fast food consumed in the clubhouse and on charter flights. Uh, the writers go on to say players will still be allowed to have a post-game beer and eat what they want, but the Cubs are looking for individual responsibility and personal accountability. The players should police themselves and make healthy decisions and act more professionally. What do you think about that? If they only went after domestic issues the way they go after the fast food guys. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> if they only, if they only, uh, you know, seriously, when you stop and think about it. Yep. Uh, you know, with the Rick, with the Rickett situation, with the father and everything. I mean, oh. uh, you know, with all the issues that they've had. Addison Russell. Uh, I think it's important if you bring on an extra Big Mac, there should be a problem, for God's sake. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But these guys are grown men. They're treating them like they're in college. Maybe that's the problem. Mm. And and I don't like the way Theo Epstein's the guy that seems to be the guy that laid this out and Jed Hoyer. I don't. Yeah, it seems You know, I'll have to get a hold of Jesse and ask him about this. Yeah, that would be a great topic, though, next time we have uh, yeah. Jesse Rogers on because he's got the insight right. on this. All right, let's talk about now knowing all this and knowing that uh, Mr. Madden is in the final year of his contract, the Cubs have not made a commitment to him one way or another. This team is loaded with talent, but we saw them uh, ousted out of the playoffs in that one-game playoff last year. They struggled most of the season. They had to have a late-season surge to get into to that playoff game, what do you think about the 2019 Chicago Cubs? Are they going to win it all? Yes. Oh. I think they're going to get to the World Series. I'm not going to tell you if they're going to win it all. Okay. But you know what? I think they're going to get there. I just don't I don't think Milwaukee's going to have the same type of year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it's going to be uh, the Cubs uh, with on a mission. I think they see the window closing, but I expect Bryant to have a better year than he did last year. Rizzo, these guys have all been put on notice. Um, and I think Madden, we're going to find out what Madden's about. We, he's, got, he's been stubborn in a lot of his things, but we're going to find out. I don't know. I, is the team tired of Madden? I can't believe they are. Uh, but you know, with all these new rules that they're putting in, it seems to me that urgency is something that was missing from this team last year. Urgency. Get ready. Star Spangled Banner. You know, quit hanging the dugout. Most of them are to pay attention. Most of those rules you read to me are to pay attention. Right. These are professional athletes making millions of dollars. They should be ready to go. Mm-hmm. So, you know what? Maybe with this extra step and with the GM coming down on him, because I'm sure Branch Rickey, when he was with the Brooklyn Dodgers, it wasn't the manager. That was the one laying the rules down. It was Branch Rickey. Mm-hmm. Just like it's George Steinbrenner who laid down the rules. So it's not unusual for a GM to come down. It just seems like Joe Mann's missing from any conversation when it comes to the new rules. Yeah, interesting, interesting. So you are expecting 100 or so victories from this Cubs team? 97. Well, I don't care how many they get as long as they get into the playoffs. Okay, that's fair. So, and- so in other words, if they get 92... Mm-hmm. And it's good enough. And Milwaukee's in second with eighty eight. Mm-hmm. It's fine with me. Okay. I don't care. I don't care. There's home field advantage crap. If you got a good enough team, you'll win anywhere. Okay. Now does you Darvish have to win fifteen or more games in order for the Cubs to get to the World Series? I hope not. <laughs> but I'm praying that he does. Uh, yes. I'm hope not. If I think if we could get eleven or twelve wins out of him, somebody else picks up the pace. 
I think Lester's got to have another big year. Look, the pitch, the pitching it is 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 okay. The starting pitching with Hendricks and Lester mm-hmm. and Hamels, I love those guys. Mm-hmm. They're veterans. They'll give you five, six innings. It's the bullpen. Yeah. It's going to be the bullpen. Milwaukee's got the best bullpen in that division. Uh, the key to beating Milwaukee, and sometimes these guys bring in these relief pitchers now in the second or third inning. The key to beating Milwaukee is to get into the starters early. So if you have the lead, you won't go to the bullpen or to your best pitchers. All right, let's turn our attention to your favorite team, the Chicago (laughs) White Sox. I love them, but, man, they don't love us. I saw the lineup tonight. I don't even know who the guys are. Uh, yeah, this, you know? this team is, uh, well, uh, and a lot of people. I are saw sh- they're giving away on Twitter, they're giving away White Sox soccer jerseys. <laughs> Which is interesting because the fire will almost outdraw the Sox. <laughs> oh, you're mean. You're mean. Honest, but you're mean. <laughs> no, I mean, I think they drew last 15,000, uh-huh. and the Sox are drawing now. Uh, 17, 18, 19, who knows? It's a, it's a shame. It really is. But hopefully they'll get off to a good start. Mm-hmm. This Jimenez kid's got everybody tanked up. Yep. Uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. was ranked uh, number one. Uh, Jimenez is ranked number two. Uh, and I'll tell you this, for people that think you like Alloy better than, you know, so much, would you trade him for Vlad Guerrero Jr.? I think so. Yeah, probably. I think so. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, but it's good that they got a prospect. I'm looking forward to this one. I got, you know me, I got, my eyes don't fail me too much. I knew the other guys like Mankata and them, that they're not really going to be all that promising as far as I'm concerned, but I like this kid, so hopefully they'll get off to a good start, but their pitching is going to be atrocious, I think. Yeah, you know, uh, they lost 100 games last season, as I'm sure you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you suffered they're horrible. Through, you suffered through many of those losses. And what did they do to get better? <laughs> um, well. <laughs> what did they do to get better? Seriously, folks, We're, they're banking on these kids to get better. Yeah, exactly. You know what? These kids may never get better. Mm-hmm. You know? I think they gave up on Billy the Kid once he hit his 15th birthday. He's never going to get better. This guy's going to be a stone cold outlaw. Never going to get better. And I look at the White Sox, and I don't see any buzz. Don't hear any buzz. They're a very, uh, I guess, stagnant organization. I, it's a shame, uh, but we'll see what happens. I mean, you hope for the best. Everybody in spring training is undefeated. All right, so God, that's good. That philosophy. Uh, you know what? It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never uh, heard yeah, that. Yeah, it, it, it just how it comes out of my mouth. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, so are they going to win more than seventy games? That would be a eight game improvement. Uh, they won sixty two yes. last year. Are they going to win seventy or more games? I'll go seventy two. All right, a ten game improvement. That it's a, it's a shame. A ten game improvement. <laughs> it's you know what I mean? A right ten direction. game improvement. Think about what we're talking about here from sixty two to seventy two. <laughs> but you know what? That's what they'll sell. Uh-huh. That's what they'll sell, Jan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I like eight year. The Cubs got new food. Yes. They got short rib fries. I guess Ooh. fries are cut in half. Cool. They look good with all sorts of sauces. Yeah. In a big helmet. <laughs> I love it. In a big helmet. Yeah. So that's going to be about 20 bucks, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. $25, and plus Oof. you got to go to Northwestern Memorial afterwards. <laughs> Believe me. All right. Believe so, me. So we have you at 72 wins for the White Sox, and we got you at about 97, 98, 99 wins. Give me, for... 90, give me 96 wins with the Cubs. Okay, I'm writing those down, and in, uh, in October we'll, uh, we'll, we'll check on that. Um, and now, are you sure you're going to are you going to keep a hold of all that, Aldo? <laughs> all the paperwork you have, you're going to keep my predictions no. for the baseball season Hell no. somewhere in the files. <laughs> I'm just asking. That's all. That's no, me. I I will. I will. You I know? promise. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Badge forty in the chat room says that he believes it's going to be a Cubs Yankees World Series, but that the Yankees are going to win. Um, you know what? I don't think they're going to get in. Really? Tell me why. I'm not big on the Yankees, hmm. like everybody else. They got Stanton. I was watching them today. Mm-hmm. They got Judge. They got Stanton. But they got Aaron Boone. I'm not big on him, man. And and they're pitching. Eh. 
Hmm. I just think that's going to be somebody that we're not expecting. Okay, so you... It's not going to be two teams I think aren't going to get in, the Yankees and the White Sox. Everything else is <laughs> who knows, but... Uh, I mean, what about Boston? Yeah, what about Boston? What about Boston? Sox? Yeah, they look good this season. I think they can repeat. I think Boston can repeat. Yeah. You got Mookie Betts, you got Ben Attende, you got Chris Sale. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Cora as the manager with the second year. I know what they say. It's hard to repeat, but you know what? I think when it comes to pitching and overall team strength, I like the Boston Red Sox. Mm. All right. Well, I kind mm. of uh... – <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> My wife asked me to change those up. I listened to the show yesterday four <laughs> times a year. Just here you go. <laughs> I should add it all those together. Maybe we can make a song out of it or something. Yeah, exactly. We'll put them all together. We'll put them all together and we'll start. We'll go. We'll go top forty. Uh, all right. I want our listeners to know about where they can go to get more Mike North predictions, so that they can pay for summer barbecues, summer vacations, and, and so forth. Tell our audience you know what, where they can go. You know what? Better bad by now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know the money you could have had in the I know, bank. Oh, I know. <laughs> We've talked to each other about this. It's unbelievable. No, anyway, here's where everybody else. Wednesday, we're going to have a special uh, odds couple from 6 to 7 for the tournament. So I have all my picks there. Yeah. Um, and we're going to also have the special Mike North Advantage on Sunday, where we got, and we, we picked up some hay yesterday, folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you guys that are down early in the week. Those Sunday picks uh, bailed you out. Right. There's no doubt. If you took my two picks, that's what we do. We'll bail you out on Sunday if you need it. We'll help add to your uh, bill fold if, if you need it, too. So that's going to be on Sunday, one of our favorite shows. And then, of course, every Monday we have a guest on uh, with the Mike North Advantage. So uh, we've been having fun, man. Yep. Aldo and I have been kicking ass and taking names. We're doing, we're doing a lot of business together. We're starting to get familiar with each other. In a good way. And That's all I'm going to tell you. We have fun. Jerry64 in the chat room is begging for you to help him out on the Brown Loyola Marymount game in the CBI quarterfinals uh, tonight. You got a pick or a, a thought on that one? And he thanks you for the for the Pacers pick on Sunday. That was incredible, he says. Well, tell him thank you, and I appreciate it. I know you're here, and, uh, and, and no problem, buddy. You know, uh, I like... North Folk State tonight. Okay. I'm not making it. I mean, I, I'm going to take the game myself. I'm not, uh, you know, I take them. They're in the NIT at 8 o'clock. I can't give you a game that you just gave because I haven't even looked at it, to okay. be honest with you. So I'll give them that. It's not an official pick of mine, but it's, it's a game I'm going to play, my friend. Oh. Eldo knows I play all my games, and, and that's why, you know, I'm in such a good mood. <laughs> Eldo told me earlier, I'd like to run you over with a car. And I said, what, what year? What model? I, I, I didn't care. It was a consequential to me. <laughs> yeah, it would bounce that's right it. off of you. That's for sure. Just, just tell me what year, what model. I want to be. He told me, he said, of 63 Impala, I'm, I'm in. What can I tell you? The emperor or No, but that's a odds. lot of fun. We're having fun handicapping. We're having fun. Now, I want to make sure that when you say the odds uh, uh, couple, that's on E. ESPN 1000 AM on your dial, and that's Fridays at 6 p.m. Central. Again, ESPN 1000 and the Mike North Advantage. You can hear here live on Mixler.com, Sunday mornings at 8 a.m., and then the Monday night version that features an interview. Mike lines up at 7 p.m. Those Mike North Advantage shows can all be found on your podcast stream. You can find it on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, you name it. Any place you can pick up a podcast, you will find the Mike North Advantage show under the Bears Barroom Radio Network. Mike, it's been great fun. As usual. That's all I have is fun on this show with you, Aldo. We have a good time. We have fun. We have, uh, if you want to thank Matt Moody, want to thank everybody who's involved, Rodoliak, Tick Splits, uh, Rodoliak Law Group, our friends at Tick Splits, great people. Uh, on behalf of everybody out there, let's keep winning. Take that Norfolk State tonight. Maybe we'll come away with one. Uh, Eldo, you take care of yourself. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. You got it, brother. Talk to you later.